thank you so much for for that lovely intro. Uh, like you mentioned, yeah, my name is Ziv Kodrowski. I live in Oakville, Ontario, uh, and I do uh, lead generation and uh, sales development through uh, LinkedIn. Today, I put a very brief uh, presentation. I'll try to be more um, specific, more with details, more with examples and things you can actually take in. Uh, by the end of today, uh, I think you will have a system that, you know, you can just basically plug and play and start using it today. Uh, let me share my screen and we can get it going. There we go. So what I'll go over today is basically a guide uh, to help you get paying fine opportunities from LinkedIn, not just uh, leads, not just contacts, not just phone numbers, but actually moving someone from your uh, ideal potential client um, all the way to a paying client. So uh, specifically what I will cover is I will uh, show you how to uh, create a highly converting target, li target list in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And for this, you do need Sales Navigator because of the specifics of the targeting. Um, the four DM message sequence that I use that basically I move prospects to book the calls, um, a very simple follow-up tracking system because you do need to track these things and that's how you will have the most success because the magic happens uh, in the follow-up phases and some KPIs for success. So you can kind of measure and know if it's working or if it's not working, if you need to tweak or if you need to change something when you try to do this. What you will gain today is, like I mentioned, a new potential revenue uh, stream that we can basically plug and play, uh, a ready to go LinkedIn a sales system, the tools you need to generate those sales opportunities. And again, we're not doing cold leads. We're not scraping data or anything like that. And you're going to get the KPS for success. So you can measure and kind of always know what's working and what you need to tweak and what you need to change. So the first thing that we need to look at is uh, LinkedIn sales navigator target list. So the core filters that I always use, and in a second, I'll share my screen to show you LinkedIn Sales Navigator, and I'll make a list in front of you in a couple of minutes. But the core filters that you always should have is job title, geography, posted on LinkedIn. Uh, before it was posted on LinkedIn the last 30 days, now it just, that's what it is. Make sure you have that on. Uh, company headcount, second degree connections. Ideally, you want to start with second degree. And once you kind of deplete the list or it's very uh, going down to the bare bones, then you can add third degree. There's nothing wrong with that. I always start with second degree because you have higher chance of connecting because you have more common things. A good target list is somewhere between 300 and 1,000 potential clients, a lead list. That's kind of the, the range that I would like to do because you can you can validate. You can go through them. You can look at them. And you can see who you're targeting. If it's too big, then you're just kind of hoping that it's the right one. And I'm going to show you some hacks, like I mentioned, Boolean searches, different company, and a job title. So let me switch screens very quickly. So this is LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And what I'll do is I'll kind of show you very quickly how this uh, whole thing works. One of the uh, targets that I usually work really well is accountants. So I'm going to make a list how I reach out to uh, accountants. So this is LinkedIn Sales Navigator posted on LinkedIn. Uh, like I said, it's always turned on. Geography, let's go with Canada. Uh, viewed uh, profile message, you have those as turned off, meaning if I've viewed someone's profile or if I have messaged them, don't put them in this list. And if I've reached out to them in the past, LinkedIn saves them as leads. So I want to say exclude those. So this is brand new people, everybody that is brand new. And as I reach out to people, they're automatically taken out of the list by LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So you never make a mistake, send the same message twice. Uh, so have that one. I have that one on second degree connection. And what I like to do is, uh, so we, we're going to go with industry, accounting. And you do want to think a little bit outside of the box. So someone, if it's an accountant, they might put themselves in financial services as well. Because, you know, uh, it all depends on how people label themselves. LinkedIn doesn't uh, put you in a specific bracket. You do it yourself. So for uh, if I'm reaching out to accountants, I will do accounting. I'll do financial services, Canada, and second degree connection. So I, I see this. 29k that's a massive list so these are little hacks that start coming into play so what i'm going to do is current company so what it what they don't tell you is this is very important current company is actually the name of the company so if i put accounting it will give me companies that have the word accounting in it so i will never make a mistake and i will never send a message to the wrong target but accountants don't have just accounting So let's say we're going to go with something like accounting, bookkeeping, tax, and accountant. So now I'm kind of uh, 
tweaking the target list and hacking it a little bit because I'm saying, give me companies that have these specific words in the company name. Another way that I've done this in the past, I'm still doing is when you want to reach out, let's say for uh, someone that is an HVAC, if you type in HVAC or some of the keywords they might use in the company name, you will always have your target 100% accurate. Or if I'm reaching out to digital agencies, I will put digital agency, creative communication, media, and I never make a mistake in my targeting. And that is step number one in doing properly this whole thing. So now I have companies that are there. I see now I'm down from 29K down to uh, 450, 459, second degree connection. Then what I'm going to do is this is, I consider it broad stroke, but I do want to say owner, partner, CXO, vice president, maybe director. Uh, usually what I would do is current company title. So the actual title, CEO, CFO, the full name, the, the abbreviated version as well. But now I want to say, give me the decision makers. Give me the decision makers in accounting. 200 results. Uh, and you can see as you're scrolling down, you can basically see that all of these are my ideal target. I'm not making a mistake. I'm going to reach out to the right people. So when I write my messages, they will always hit the right target 100%. So I know my offer will work for them. So I have LinkedIn posted on LinkedIn. I have second degree. I have that. I have my industries. Now, let's say if you want to talk only to senior, like seasoned for many years in the business, then I will go years in current company, more than 10 years, and you'll have a very narrow list, uh, 33 people. And I can reach out to these 33 people. They have been 32 years in the business doing this. So if I have an offer that I know will work for them, I can reach out to them. If you are trying to find a business owner that is um, at the end of his uh, kind of business journey and maybe his second generation don't want to take over the business, they want to sell M&A kind of stuff, this is also a filter that you would use. And if your list is too small, third degree connection, I can just add it, boost it up a little bit. And that's how you can go from very wide all the way to a very narrow targeted list of um, accountants and uh, whatever you want to kind of narrow it down. So this is how I do my lists. This is how you can do it as well. So always have your second and third degree connections seniority level so you always reach out to the decision makers posted on linkedin very important a geography industries and like i said these little hacks if you know the specific industry you can type it as a company name and it will pull out exactly those companies and you always have 100 percent accurate list let me switch back to my uh presentation there we go once you have your good target list you're all set the next thing you got to do is your message sequence so this is where you see these messages. <laughs> You've received a lot of weird ones. We all do. Uh, but this, if you follow these five steps, you will have uh, a message sequence that always works. And I will give you my message sequence. You can kind of play with it as well. Uh, but this is how you will get someone from that list, just a lead, to actually talk with you, connect with you, move to a call, pitch, and potentially become your client. So number one is the authentic connection message increases uh, the connection rate. That means... Um, if you say, I love what you do at XYZ company, fantastic. Like you, they know that you don't know what they do. So you can't say, I love what you do this or that. Or if you say, I just want to connect the network and then you follow up with a pitch that is also not authentic. So when you talk about authentic connection message, you do want to be genuine to say, this is who I am. This is what I do. Saw that you do that. Would love to connect. So they know this will be some sort of business engagement. And if it makes sense, they accept and it's fantastic. So you're, you're not going to have that problem of, Someone saying, hey, you're spamming me. Why are you sending these messages? You said this, but you're switching it. So authentic connection will make a big difference in your connection rate. Number two is the clear value proposition drives engagement. So when you have a clear value proposition, exactly what your offer is, and it's not shady or unclear a little bit or pie in the sky, kind of I need to like visualize it, you will have people engaging, meaning they will say yes or no. So a good example is one of my clients, they were doing software development and they would say we can like, modernize your company and uh, digitize this and did and it's just too convoluted and when they switch to say that we do microsoft dynamics 365 custom and implementation that was very clear exactly uh, the prospect knows exactly what their value proposition is so that's what i mean clear value proposition drives engagement you will get yes or no's if your value proposition is not clear people just receive the message and don't reply we don't want that number three great offer moves prospects to book the call. So if the offer is great, that is what people kind of move them to book the call. You're not going to do um, building a relationship and cold outreach is extremely difficult. So we just want to say that this is what I do. This is my offer. This is my value proposition. This is what I would like to offer you and to have the call. And after that happens, if all that makes sense, call is fantastic and everything moves. Don't try to build a rapport or 
build a relationship in cold outreach, it just doesn't work. People don't kind of don't feel comfortable about it. So what you want to do is have a very good offer and that will move prospects to take the call to see, hey, let's see what, what they're offering. Let's, you know, let's talk and we'll go from there. Combined curiosity and credibility in your sequence is important because if you say everything, your whole entire process and everything that is uh, a part of your offer, there's no reason to take the call. I just got it, everything. I got it. So I went on your website. I read everything. I made my own kind of opinion. And I didn't give you the opportunity to, you know, say it the right way. I made my own opinion. It's not the real deal. So you do want to combine a little bit of a curiosity and credibility in your sequence, meaning this is who I am. You can check me out. I'm a real person. This is what I've done. I have reputation and stuff like that. Combine that with curiosity. People like, look, they will, they will think like, let's see what they have. Let's talk and we'll go from there. Very important. I've seen this, uh, this mistake many times in the past. One option, one path, one call to action. So you just want to say, let's have a call next Wednesday or Thursday. Here's the booking link. If you try to say, we can meet in person, here's my phone number, or let's have an email. In a cold outreach, person just doesn't make a decision, moves forward. They don't uh, dislike it. It just they don't want to make a decision because it's a busy day and they just move to the next thing in their busy day. One option, one path, one call to action is a straight yes or no. If it makes sense, it's a yes. If it doesn't, it's a no. So you always want to have one option, one path, one CTA. That's your best bet. I'm going to show you very quickly now the message sequence that I have, and I'll include it so you guys can kind of play with it. So basically what I have is I break it down into a connection message. So I have three variants of a connection message. This is the most direct one that I have, which is very true. And I'm here to waste your time. I've offer great value to you because I've reached out to a lot of people in that industry and I work with them. Uh, um, message number one, three versions as well, who you are exactly, your value proposition, a little bit about the pain point, one path, one option, one call to action. Kind of three versions of that as well. You build credibility in the second one saying, this is who I am. This is who I've worked with. Here's some reviews, uh, video testimonials, companies, referrals, so that they know that you are the real deal. And number three, you leave the door open for retargeting. So I've seen a lot of people say, this is my last attempt. That's not my strategy because I don't want to burn a lead. I don't want to burn an opportunity. I don't know what happens in their life right now. So I never say, this is my last attempt. I always want to leave the door open. That's just my style. And I have two uh, messages. One is that kind of version, very light. And the second one is I try to give them a post or um, a YouTube video that I've done or a podcast like this to show them this is what I do. This is my whole process. You can watch it. And if you know, that makes sense, then we can maybe have a call and leaving the door open for retargeting. That's how I do it. And like I said, all these messages, I'll include them in my, uh, my uh, presentation and I'll give it to you guys at the end of the call. So you can kind of tweak, modify it, make it uniquely yours and try to use it. I wouldn't use it verbatim, that's for sure. All right, we got our messages on. We have our target on. Simple follow-up tracker. So everything that you do, you got to track it. And that's how the magic happens. Very few people, uh, literally very few, I don't even know the percentage that I can say that, have received the connection message, said, this is fantastic. Booked a call with me the next day and said, this is amazing. Of course, let's start working together. It's very, very unlikely. Usually there is a follow-up process and you want to do it properly. Um, I try to have a balance where it's not too aggressive, but you're also not negligent. So that's kind of the balance you want to go for. Um, what we do is we start with sending 20 connection messages per day manually. And I know in this era of AI and automations is very unusual, but every automation has to connect to LinkedIn's API and they know exactly what you do. So they always suppress the results. So that's why my whole process for all of my clients, for myself as well, Everything is done manual. A real person sends the connection messages and that shows better connection and better results. So we do uh, 20 connection messages manually per day. And in a span of three months, we go up to 40 connection messages per day, plus the three follow-ups, DM1, 2, and 3. And your profile is always say, I've been doing it for three years. No problems at all. If you start increasing it 45, 50 connection messages per day, gray area, you might get blocked. And blocked is not like... Uh, getting banned, they will just kind of not allow you to send connection messages for several days. So fly under the radar, do 40 connection messages per day max manually with LinkedIn Sales Navigator turned on, you should be fine. Uh, DM1, you want to send that, so direct message one, you want to say that, send that the day after they accept the connection message. Uh, what I do for DM2 is three days after that one, I go with the second message, three days after that one, third message, so that if 
there is enough of a of a gap and if you go day in day out every day sending the messages it's too aggressive people just hit block because it's just not normal it's not normal human behavior we are very busy as our potential clients so having a couple of days in between messages works pretty good let me switch now to my other screen to show you the simple tracker like i said you guys will get this as well so very simple like i said you have the name the link campaign um if you have multiple targets if you have two or three lists this is where your campaign is if you have just one you just put general and then you want to check mark when you send a connection message and the date it was sent some people will feel like you're doing double the work but if you want to do some number crunching it's important to have these two if you use excel you kind of know uh, the deal so then you have your check marks and then linkedin action so you have people that are interested they would ask for more information they would say not right now maybe in three or six months not interested at all they unfriended and withdrawn meaning after you send a bunch of connection messages some people will not accept those connection messages you go back after a couple of weeks and you start withdrawing connections so that your profile is very clean and normal so that's what i usually do those are my usual six linkedin actions because it kind of encompasses everything that uh, the prospect might say and then we do have the next stage so they took an action if they booked a call or something like that uh, you put the date of action when they said whatever they said and then if they move to the next stage then you have these nine stages and you can move them um, as you are progressing more and more of them to uh, you know have the call did you pitch the service are you negotiating whatever whatever these are the nine stages that i have if you guys feel there's too many you can kind of cut them down a little bit and make it make it uh make it work for you switch back to the presentation and i think a couple more slides to cover now that you have all of that going you want to make sure that you're on the right path so instead of googling and spending hours and hours i'll kind of show you the kpis that industry standard and what you should be looking for to have to make sure that you have a good campaign running so uh, what gets measured gets managed, of course. But what you're looking for is a connection rate of 25% and up. And how you do that is basically you divide the DM ones versus CM. So that will show you how many connection messages you've sent, how many were accepted. That is your connection rate. So you want to have 25% connection rate or above. That means that you're doing something good. That means that your targeting is good. That means that your connection message is good. Uh, engagement rate, you're looking for 40% engagement rate. That means yes or no or any action. So that means that your value proposition is very clear and people are saying yes or no. They, they know exactly what you're pitching. If that is below, then you should tweak your value proposition because uh, people are just not understanding exactly what you're selling or offering and they're not taking any action at all. Booked calls on average, A plus uh, calls per month. If you do this whole manual with just one LinkedIn profile, and that, like I said, is correlated to your offer, how good the offer is and the reason why would you take the call? Um, like I mentioned, for example, some clients, they have uh, SEO services or website services, and they will say, I did a preliminary audit, or if they do social media, they say, I did a preliminary audit. I want to show you their report. Give me 15 minutes on a call. I just want to show you exactly what I've done for your company. And then very good reason to take the call. Curiosity, credibility, good offer. You will have more than eight calls per month for sure. And you should shoot for closing two clients a month consistently with this process. So the example that I have at the bottom, those are kind of rough numbers. But if you send 400 connection messages or 20 connection messages per day, if 100 are accepted and if 40 of those replied with a positive answer and you managed to book 10 of those, uh, seven might show up. You know, three are no-shows or rebooks. Uh, out of those, maybe two were not good or disqualified. So you pitch actually five. You should, you know... By the end of the month, sign at least two clients through this process. And those are kind of your uh, KPIs for success. That is all that I had for you guys today. And uh, I'm open to all kinds of questions you might have for this whole process.